Welcome back to Asian Party! What's up you guys? It's your host Nina and Nikki and this is Asian Party! Woo! Yay, yay, Thanks yay. for tuning in with us again! Yes, this episode is the last episode of the year, of the season. <laughs> it has been a very fast season with you guys. I, that's how I feel. Yeah. It has. <laughs> It'll be like that. Seriously. <laughs> I feel like we had so much like good conversations and great people on the podcast. And uh, <laughs> yep. And great sponsors as well. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the onion rings from Scent Fat Corporation here. Yeah, so today. good. Yeah. It's so hard not trying to eat it all. Mm-mm. Here you get one. <laughs> Look at her. What is it? Um, hoarding? No, not hoarding. Hoarding. I'm just uh, kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh! You get one of these if you shake your tush. Oh, my God. Oh! Okay. Mm. Oh, these are really good. Wow. These are really good. Honestly, they remind me of shrimp chips. Close enough. Yeah. Um, but, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is, yeah, like she said, our last episode, and we have just so much to talk about with you guys. Mm hmm. Um, for this specific episode, we wanted to kind of just reflect because um, if you guys remember, our last season, we actually got to sit and reflect on ourselves, just kind of like on the previous year, how we started the season and how we ended the season, and kind of like where we were at that point in time. So for this episode, instead of just reflecting on ourselves, we actually wanted to do a little segment where we got to focus and reflect on our community. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, which I'm pretty sure you guys do, who are new, um, we are both Hmong. Um, Nikki's actually Hmong Lao, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we are obviously predominantly like really involved with our Hmong community. So yeah, like it's been a very interesting, a very lots of highs, some lows in the Hmong community this year, and I think it's worth talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's worth talking about the buzz, all the good and the bad. Not, I mean, there wasn't really much that was bad, but I mean, I feel like 2023 was a year where a lot of Hmong people really came on the rise. Yeah. Like, a lot of things, really great things happened, a lot of, you know, really great, uh, you know, creatives and just, you know, a yes. lot of the Hmong culture just really uproared, you know, there's... I think right, people like, were not afraid this year. Yeah. People were more um, confident, more aspiring, and ambitious. I love that. Yes. Yeah, ambitious. Like, there was what? But Yinsa, there's Lexus. Oh there's, my god, I mean, yes! Like, there's so much to talk about, and I think we want to celebrate that with you guys. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, we're going to try to do this in chronological order. Yes. So yes. If we don't do this in the right order, it's okay. Let us know. Uh, we would appreciate it, but we're going to try to do the best of all for <laughs> our knowledge. Celebrate the holidays with this season's tastiest drink from Sunfat Corporations. That I thought was super cool, which I actually didn't even know anything at all about until they came to the States, is Win and Hua. Yeah! Yeah, so Very that, cool. if I'm correct, I think it's also next in line. Um, so the Win and Hua thing, I knew nothing about Win and Hua. Straight up, I'm not gonna even lie. Yeah. Until they were like trending on Facebook. And then I'm like, okay, all right. And me being an artist, I try to be aware and updated in the Hmong community. So I always try to make sure I'm staying, especially involved in pop culture. Like that's kind of my thing, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, what's going on? Who are these people? Why are they high? What's going on? And the first time I remember seeing them was when this post went viral about how they were coming to the US and they stayed in Minnesota at like, and nothing against this home, you know, because all, I'm pretty sure a lot of Hmong homes are this, but they were literally like, brought all the way from like thailand laos to come all the way here and stayed in like this crowded mong home Aww. yeah i think with like a ton of like it wasn't like a it wasn't like a hotel room or airbnb specifically just for them and i've heard of people like hosting people before mm -hmm. but i guess like this experience was just not exactly what they expected and and that was the first viral trend like people were like oh why don't they have a hotel room da -da -da. you know we paid yeah. so much for their tickets and, da -da -da. and they're over here but 
they're not in like a fancy place like why are they in somebody is a full family house you know yeah and then i was like whoa their fans are tripping for them so they must be big enough and yeah. then that's when i started okay and then that's when like all the win and hua like like publicity just kept going and going and going and i was like oh damn i just yeah it was just like oh a non-stop gosh. train <laughs> i didn't like i didn't learn about when and hua until her until Hua's rap verse went viral and people were trying to guess what she was trying to say this is okay. do you remember that uh for which song i don't know i don't know what song it is <laughs> But it's the one where she's rapping and like you don't know what she's saying. Oh. I'll find it for you. Okay, I'm gonna oh have to God. listen to it. I've heard some of her music, but not that one. Uh, I oh my god. I, yeah, I still to this day don't know what she's saying in there. Yeah. But well, you're still bomb as fuck. Yeah, you are bomb. <laughs> you, just so you know, you, you have girl. two moon girls in LA who love you. Uh, we support you. We love your music too. So keep doing your thing, cause ain't nobody out like you out there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So don't change, okay? Yes. Um, but Jisla, Jisla, Longa Tu King. Oh damn! Oh damn! Right. I almost said it wrong. I was gonna. Say, I was like, oh, she get, she get in there. Ah, she yes. got us. Um, but yeah, I remember like not just that, but after the whole like that situation then there was the win and who are not performing anymore for somebody do you remember oh, that oh that was such a disappointment okay so the, the whole story for those of you guys who, who are who don't know which i'm pretty sure you guys do but um so win and hua were invited from thailand and laos to come here to perform and they were basically going to be traveling and doing this like little mini concert tour while they were here so they were traveling like to popular states where there was Hmong population you know and they were doing little concerts and stuff for them um so that's and, and the hype was like to build this mini concert before the actual sub id fest and so this is also my first knowledge of understanding what sub id fest was and what they stand for what they're pl trying to do um uh, they're a southeast asian right i think mm -hmm. so, south southern east asian um festival where they celebrate like music and i think culture. they like culture and like and vendors art. and everything else so it was super super neat um they and they hands down somebody did an amazing job with marketing their stuff was very consistent um posted all the time they promoted their artists i honestly think that they did a phenomenal job with marketing um but yeah like with win and hua uh i guess like yeah, like they were like no longer gonna be performing or like something and like uh, I just I don't know what the hell was going on I know I feel like there was so much back and forth with Like just reading stuff on Facebook, right? This is the yes. source that we're getting it from is oh sponsorship Oh, no, like selling t-shirts and that's like a big problem now. And yeah, like we're just kind of like what's the whole story? And why you know did they end up being it, you know, I mean, I'm I saying that like they have they to tell us. Because yeah, it's not our business. But yeah, yeah. hypothetically, the theory that we heard is that Win and Hua or Win wanted to sell T-shirts to, you know, obviously support themselves, make some money, support their artistry, their mm -hmm. passion, which I completely can understand and respect. But I guess that was not in part of the contract terms, I guess, of with the people who had brought him or the people who he was working with who had partnered with him for Somebody Fest. And I guess that kind of like nulled the contract or something. So then that's uh, that's the theory or the, the, the rumor that I heard. Um, and I can see both ends. I can see how like, you know, obviously if you're promising to bring an artist and you're paying for everything and like da 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 da. Obviously, you don't want an artist to go under you and try to profit, obviously, from you, or like, you know, without your permission or whatever. But it's also like, damn, at the end of the day, you know, like, I respect Huin and Hua so much because they're not from here. They're from a whole other ass country, y'all. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to make it here in America. Like, it's tough, you know, like, for them to come here with a whole different culture, with a whole different society, with the culture shock, and still trying to be kind, respectful, and adapt to that and be like, you know, put on a face, you know, or shy show, you know, like, that's a lot, you know, so I give them a lot of props, but yeah, that was the rumor that I heard, and I was like, 
damn, I don't know what happened, but I just hope that both parties are okay, and I hope Lin and Juan know that they are so deserving, obviously, mm -hmm. and so talented, you know, but, And yeah. so loved. Yeah! You know, like, I know just seeing a lot Love of, like, guys. they went on, on Facebook Live a lot talking about, you know, like, some addressing issues and their problems, too, and, yeah. you know, like, they don't owe it to anyone but themselves like they don't need to explain anything yeah. and honestly i'm gonna say like we don't deserve them we like don't. they're such great human beings and so Dude, they came out here did the most and got the least yeah i like <laughs> it's so like it hurts my heart you know but they also made it the best and the one thing that i love about them both is that they never broke character nope they were you respectful know, all the, all the yep, way. They, that's how you know they are really great people. A lot of people are tried just like that, and artists will break from things mm -hmm. like that. But when in Hua, they never broke character. That's just who they are, and I love that, you know? Try to come back to y'all. who they... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> y'all don't want this! Y'all don't want this! Huh. I'm just kidding. Hey, I'm just kidding. I, we come in a package, okay? <laughs> 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 right when I right when I swing, Nikki pops up too. Yep. She's like, "Boop, what's up? Oh, oh, oh! You thought this was a one team, huh? Boop. This is a two team." <laughs> White chick, I know. I know. <laughs> Your mama saw. Oh, she coming out. Like, <laughs> yep. I need that powder. <laughs> oh my god! No. Oh my god. Um, this, uh, like <sighs> speaking of somebody fest and the win and whole thing. Yeah. Um, I guess like another thing, or I guess I'm putting my own like two cents is. After when and Hua got removed from the lineup, I was really excited to see who they were gonna try to like maybe not replace them, but like add onto the lineup because I know that they were pretty hype. And I know that they added some people after, but I will say I was just a little disappointed that they didn't have any Hmong female artists. Yeah. Like they had a good amount of Hmong male artists. All props to them. You know, like, all respect to them, but there was no Hmong female artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I just, I just kind of wonder, like, I wonder, like, who scouted, you know, these people, like, who, who scouted the artists, like, what was the research that was done, and, you know, maybe they felt like the demographic would be more, I don't know, appealing to the male artists, mm -hmm. maybe? But, yeah, I think that was just the only thing. If I could say anything, I would love to have seen female artists, Hmong female artists at 70 Fest, if they intend to invite Hmong artists back for 2024. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I was, yeah, I was just as disappointed. I was sad because I'm like, you know, we're not on the map. Our Hmong people aren't on the map. And it yeah. would have, I would have felt so proud just to see at least one Hmong girl up on but stage. Like, yeah! doing it for us you know what I mean bro and yeah it was just really saddening and this is just me as a consumer for somebody fest I love somebody fest I'm like I love everyone that's performing but like you know just like the representation of okay. all Southeast Asian cultures it would have been great to see among female artists up there especially because there's so many great ones on the rise mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah I think that was like <laughs> one thing that I was like damn like I wish I wish there was a Hmong female artist, but I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure, I mean, not saying that there were reasons, I'm pretty sure there was a reason why they couldn't find somebody, but it seems like this year, or like the way they're promoting for 2024, seems like they have a larger lineup with a more wide variety of artists, um, and I'm really excited because the artists seem very talented, so if they end up going that route where they actually are trying to highlight more on the Asian community other than just Lao and Hmong people, mm -hmm. I can see, like, I'm like, okay, you know, I think I'd be a little bit more accepting and forgiving. I'm like, okay, fine. I can see why you may or may not have, like, Hmong male and female artists this time. But, yeah, yeah so it seems like they're, they're doing a lot of promotions for that, and it looks like it's going to be a good lineup for next year, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm excited. Yes. I'm like, other than that, though, you want to talk about Yes Kitchen? Oh, my gosh. Yes, I... <sighs> So proud of Yeah! I'm such a big fan of Yeah Vang. I want to you eat your food. Yeah, if you guys don't know who Yeah is, I'm sure you guys do, but just saying, if you guys don't know who Yeah is, Yeah is our first Hmong chef to yes. really like be on any major uh, TV show or yes. platform to that promotes Hmong food and Hmong culture. But also, uh, I remember when he first started cooking, he's started cooking Hmong food for like all the breweries in St. Paul, Minnesota. And then from there, it just kind of like branched out, and then he created Union Mon Kitchen, yeah, and the North Loop, um, and then now he's um, 
he created his second location on Lake Street in Minneapolis. You guys gotta check it out. Wow. It's in a really great spot where there's a lot of, you know, like traffic coming in and out. So they'll see it and they're like, oh my gosh, let's go check that place out, you know? But when I went there in August, I wasn't able to. I went there during State Fair week and I was so mad. I was like hitting up my new friend, New Song. Hey, New Song. New and I was Song. Like, let's go eat some Union Mung Kitchen. La, la, we la, got la. there and it was closed because obviously my dumbass, they were going to, they were serving their food at the State Fair. Fair. And oh my gosh, like you guys, Yiving is literally so amazing for being able to just do this. Also, create yes. new items on the menu, like a yes. like, whoo. I don't like, know how many times I've walked into like Chinese restaurants or bakeries and I'm like, oh, you want a, a bao bun? And I'm like, Kalapau. Yeah, it's called a Kalapau. Like, give me that Kalapau. Yeah. And to be able to serve, I mean, I think I remember seeing his post. They made over 23,000 Kalapaus. Yes, they did. Like, that is, oh my god. That's freaking crazy, bro. Milestones. You try to make one. Yeah, milestones. <laughs> like, one. When you saw, like, you guys, I mean, ugh. That's when you know you got your whole hood in the kitchen, just like, we're going to whip it up for you. I love that. And I love seeing the support for Yia. Yeah. Um, if you guys haven't checked him out, he's on like a lot of major cooking shows. Yes. He's also doing one right now. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I suck at a booty right now for not thinking of the name. But he's... I know. I know which one you're talking he's about. He's doing the one with that other foodie guy that I also watch. It's so funny. I watch their videos because they pop up on Facebook and I'd be like, oh, it's those like, you know, random reels yeah, that you'd be like, oh yeah, dude, this this stuff is smacking. Mm. Ooh, some I'm fat smacking. onion rings, dude. Yeah. Huh. Wait. Um, yeah, what is that show called? I don't remember. It was like Hunger in the Wild or some type of some some type of food in the wild, something like that. But yeah, that's so amazing. Also, just like Yeah having his own podcast too. He's mm -hmm. amazing. He he's he's had some of our friends on there who are also very talented individuals and I I cannot stress this enough. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it has been such a rewarding year being able to see Hmong people celebrate other Hmong people. And Hmong people mm -hmm. work together to build together and I love that so much. I love that so much. I'm just going to say that a million times. I love that we're creating podcasts and creating videos yeah. and doing whatever the f we want yeah. because we can. You know, like, I feel like we're so, um, I don't even know what pioneer about it. Like, yeah. like it's not Pioneers. like, dude, in America, there's like a million YouTubers and a million kids who are becoming YouTubers. Mm -hmm. In the Hmong community, there's like maybe like a few, like we have a lot of YouTubers, you know, but I'm pretty sure only a few of us who are really, really well known. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, damn, I want to get on a level where like, Hmong people, when they're born, they're just like, I, I want to do this. Like, mm -hmm. we have like 50, like a thousand million YouTubers. We got a thousand million doctors, a thousand million rappers. You know, like, yeah, so I can't wait to see the Hmong people just continuously, like, do their thing and be themselves yeah. because it's just been such an amazing year to be able to, like, see people like that and be like, wow, I see somebody who looks like me, talks like me, thinks like me on TV. Like, I have waited so long for this moment. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I had to wait 27 years. Actually, it's been in the making because Brenda's song since, like, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Yeah. But... Now I can say I'm also part of the wave and I can watch the people that I know be part of the wave and make ripples within the wave. So that's been really exciting. Speaking of which, since we're on the topic of artists chronologically, I would like to say that this is also where we want to talk about some of our favorite Hmong artists on the rise. Hey! Yes, especially for those of you who debuted this year or in the last year. Yes. Oh my <clears throat> gosh, don't, we have been watching. Yes, I'm gonna try to name as many people as I can. Okay. Um, that I have been seeing that yes. post and do their stuff, and I'm like, yeah, y'all thrive. Um, I, uh, oh, damn. Okay, well, I'll, well I, can't, I feel like I can't say this one because I feel like this one's also yours, but new song. Yeah. <laughs> new yes. song's amazing. I love new song, but I also love you. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. To be fair, you I guys, am technically you an guys artist. can't of forget about now. Ninako. Yes, <laughs> 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 Shameless advertisement. I dropped an EP recently, a couple live. Y'all love a girl. Y'all want to hear some bang music, like some club music, or if you're just a baddie and you've been looking for some new makeup, get ready music, check it out. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. It's called Polai. Yeah. P-O-J-L-A-I-B. 
B-O-G-O's. Okay, I'm not gonna swear because I love y'all. Y'all my baddies. But yeah, so yes, I obviously dropped music. So I am an artist on the ride. It's grateful. Speaking of which too, Nikki technically dropped her first song this year with me. <laughs> and we did I See Why Am I. So you are also an artist on the rise. I Drip Glitter X with the capitalized G. Yeah. y'all. That's our... That's our bestie song. Yeah, I love it. I see why my called In Case You Missed It. Yes. So, yeah, that one's really lit. I love that one a lot. I've been listening to that a lot. Our friends also have been super vocal about loving that song, too, so thank y'all. Mm -hmm. They've been so sweet. They were like, we've been jamming to it, working out to it. So I appreciate yeah. them. But um, speaking of artists, right, uh, Misfits. Yes. I would say I love Misfits. H-M-I-S-F-I-T-S. I have to say it like that because it's spelled so unique. But I love Misfits. I love Charlie. He's the person who runs Misfits. Also, moment of spotlight for Charlie. He actually owns his own label or agent or a record company called 35K. Um, and I love it so much because, yeah, he started it. He's got some artists beneath him and they've been creating some bomb fire music. I'm assuming, I don't know exactly everything that Charlie does, but I know, I think he does his own like producing, mixing, mastering too. So I'm assuming he's kind of like taking them under his wings and helping them produce their music and all that stuff. So big shout out to Charlie. Um, very, very, very few people like you in the world. So I think that is phenomenal that you are taking your time and your talent to help other people rise. And I'm pretty sure that the artists that are working with you definitely feel and see that too. And also I see you. So I see your homie. And uh, I know you've been waiting for my, my, um, my verse. So I'm going to send it over. <laughs> Wait, okay, hold on. I'm confused. Can you explain what Misfits is and who they are? Yeah, so Misfits, it, his name is actually Charlie Vu. Um, you've probably seen him. I don't know if you saw him recently. He was like in a Sriracha costume recently in like Elizabeth, like who's part of Social Project Exchange. She's been kicking it with that crew too. So I've been seeing them like promote each other a lot, which is super cute. Mm. But yeah, Charlie, he's located, if I'm correct, I believe in, I think in Minnesota. I think Minnesota, either Minnesota or Michigan, one of those. Um, and he opened up his own label recently called 35K, like I said. And he, yeah, he drops music and stuff too. He's, he raps mainly. Like, he, he does more rapping. Mm. He's the one that I think I told you, like, oh, you want to drop on the feature? And they were looking for other females. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's him. Yeah, okay. the Project Automatic. That oh. song that I did was with him. Oh. So he, 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 that's how I actually ended up meeting Charlie. He was like, hey, like, I got this song. It's really cool. I'm getting some other rappers to get on there. They want to try. You want to get on it? And I'm like, mm -hmm. hell yeah. So that's my first taste of it and it was just for fun, you know, but honestly like the way the whole song ended up going and the rappers that he pulled together I think everybody killed it and I was like wow Charlie has a good nick for finding people and also I think he's just Got this ear for like obviously mixing mastering or producing and I think that he's really good at that So shout out to you misfits Yay, go Charlie! Yes! Um, other than that, I'm like Duwachi Duachi Yang. Oh my god, I love her I mean, we voice. know she's been in the music game for a minute, but we know that she dropped her album, Roller yeah. Coaster, this year. And I would say, that I think, I mean, I love all of her music. She did a great job, like, playing different songs. I would say Master Manipulator is probably my favorite, though. So, Ooh. props to you, Duachi. I love your vocals. I cannot wait to see what else you have coming for us and in store for us. Ah. Yeah, speaking of Duachi, I love Kevin. I know Duachi. Yeah. Hang out a lot. Kevin so. Pong you. Oh my gosh, Kevin. I love you. I have yet to meet you. Only she has met you yet. Yeah, and he is so sweet and so creative and so funny. Yeah. Like, so funny. It's, oh my god. Kevin, you're so hilarious, but I'm so proud of you. And I have been watching your journey as an artist as well. And I yes. remember you saying, like, it took, it took you, what, two to three years to make this new album? And your vocals are amazing. Like, you have such a unique yes. voice. Um, and it's so strong. Like, it is so strong. And yes. Your moat is on point, honey. Yes. Like, I love listening to your yes. shit because it makes sense. It's on point, And you're so creative with the shit you say. So, yeah. keep it up. I love Jadani. Keep they, doing you. I love that music video, too. Oh my god, yes. With so bad. Yeah. I'm sitting here like, did we live in LA? I feel like we don't do enough. I know. I'm like, damn, mean, we, do more. we don't have no Chinese, like, sure shit going on. I know, like, damn. Like, yo, costume, everything. Oh my god. Amazing. I feel like none of our music videos have been Asian recently. So, hey, be on the lookout. Because I do have some Asian music videos, but I'm like, they're not happening anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But they are in the works. I just love well. seeing what everybody else has also been doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um,. Speaking of which, another person that we would like to highlight is New mm -hmm. from News Music. 
She's located in Hawaii. She is actually, um, I think she does a lot more like R&B and pop and stuff too. Like that's kind of her style. But she's done a lot more acting and commercial work this year. So I know she did like a play recently. But also shout out to her because I know, you know, there's, I don't feel like, I don't feel, I love whenever there's a new mom female artist on the rise or mom female artists who like pursue their career, mm -hmm. especially in the, in the music field. It's, it's so exciting for me. So mm -hmm. yeah, shout out to her. I got to meet her recently too. She came to LA. I got to karaoke a little bit for her before she left. Uh, I'm not gonna lie though. I was like dead ass tired <laughs> and I'm gonna be straight up. I felt so bad. I was so freaking tired because I literally just flew back from Houston that weekend from like my mini tour. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. So I came back and then we had dinner that like, I think Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday and uh, I was like so dead but I was trying to like talk and make conversation and then she kind of called me out and she was like oh like this is not the Ninako is this is not the Ninako I see on social media and I was like oh no I don't want people to think I'm fake I'm not fake no I like this I was like okay so I was like Phew. I pulled up whatever <laughs> 10,000 10% energy I had left and I tried to serenade her with my karaoke, and I hopefully I made that that made her night. Oh, but she was super sweet about it. She actually texted me. She's like, "Not just giving you a hard time." So I love you, new. Thank you so much. Ah! Oh, I love that. Yes. Um, and I didn't mean to take away from new song, but new song, I love you. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. Hold on. We got to put a whole segment mm. on new song. First of all. Okay. First of all. <laughs> Y'all do not know how much this girl does, okay? When I first met New Song, it was when I heard... Fuck, I don't even remember what the, Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. I love this song so much. I don't remember the fucking title. La La Bong. I know I love La La Bong, oh. but it wasn't that song. It was another one. It was, uh... No, it was, um, the one she did with the group. The... 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 In Indigo? Indigo, yeah. Yeah, there we go. That one. Da -na -na, you and me. Da -da -na -da 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 -na -da -da -na free. Yeah, that song... That was my first introduction to new song. Um, come to find out, y'all, I loved it. It was shot beautifully. It was so amazing. It was phenomenal. Y'all, y'all, new song is literally the person who creates all of this. She's the person who choreographed everything. She's the one who got all the, 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 the everything to make it possible, to make Indigo, like, that music video happen. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's other people who had a part in it, too, but... She was really the main core of what brought that together and just understanding what she's been doing behind the scenes all these years is so phenomenal. It makes so much sense why she's really good at what she does. So, new song, I see you, I hear you, I'm amazed by you. Like, I don't think you guys understand how much I love women and I love Hmong women. Especially when I meet other Hmong women that I'm like, whoa, you, you, wow, you're different. Like, you do that, you know, like. New song, you are phenomenal. She's amazing. This girl not only sings, she dances, y'all. And I mean dance. Like, she she could pull some Doja Cat type sexy type things. But she, y'all just, y'all lucky she's being nice and respectful. And creating some dope PG-13 good dance content for y'all. Because we know that we need it. But mm -hmm. she's really good. She's really, 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 really good. Yeah. And she's so sweet. And yes. Guys and really, humble. Yeah, if you guys really get to know her, like... In person and as a person, I got to take her out to lunch and just like get to know her when I was in Minnesota and she's the sweetest person and you will really get to know how long she's been in this business for. Yeah. And like, let me tell you, I mean, you know it too, but I mean, I've seen you do the, all the work. Like this shit is hard. It's a long time and it's a process. So mm. for a new song to be able to get to where she's at, at to this day, um, yeah creating you know two two mom female groups like that's amazing and creating all the lyrics songwriting and the music for it like Y'all that, that is a lot of work and especially in mom that is a lot of talent so i love your new song nancy she her name is nancy oh nancy yes. yeah and i also made her led light for her too well um, i love her so much she's yeah. so sweet um yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, there's a lot of other people that I know are on the rise, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, Congrats to all you guys. Yeah, for even like, the people that we didn't name, we know there's a lot of people out there who are hustling, putting their work out there. If you didn't hear yourself, please comment yourself below. We'll make sure to give you guys a shout out in the next video because you guys, we're all about highlighting people and highlighting artists, getting our platform to help mm -hmm. and give the word out because there's so many dope people in oh the world. God. I have to tell you another thing. What? There's a Hmong girl that lives in LA and she's only 15, 16. Her name is Jewel Chang, and she goes by Jewel Chang Music. Dude, I know her! I follow her! Yeah, 
me too. Does yeah. she have Hmong? Yeah, she's Hmong. Bro, okay, I'm not gonna lie. When I saw her last name Chang, I was like, okay, she might be Chinese. Cause you know, there's so many people out there that have like the Chang mm -hmm. or the Lee as their last yeah, name. Or I believe, Hmong. She's, I believe she's Hmong. Is she? Okay, yeah, she has I a beautiful voice. Beautiful voice, and she's so trained, well trained. Plays guitar like no tomorrow. And piano. Even if she's not Hmong, and Jewel, you are amazing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like she's amazing. Um, but yes, check like, her out. Please, please, if you guys know anybody that y'all trying to shout out, you. Even if you're not an artist, if you have an artist that you know and you're trying to give them more highlight, let us know. We're going to shout them out in the next next home, next podcast. So, ah, because we love highlighting people. Da -da -da -da. But outside of that, I'm like, outside of, you know, Hmong artists on the rise, I think it's also cool to, like, point out Hmong influencers on the rise. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny to say, like, that's a thing, right, y'all? Y'all be like, Influ yes, influence. I will say... There's a controversy, right? Is an influencer a thing? Yes. I would consider influencing a thing. It is a thing. Is it like a real-time job? Not all the time. If you get lucky enough to get paid, yes. And that is very possible. I know people who make pretty good money from being influencers, so I'm not going to disacknowledge that. Um, but I will say the people who put in the hard work, I see y'all and I recognize y'all. And on that list, I already have two names for show. The first one is Sultana. Obviously, mm. Sultana Zhang. Sultana motherfucking Zhang. Um, we love her. We love you. Ah, she is. Love you. She's such a, a ray of sunshine, you guys. She's literally. If I had it, she's the, in my opinion, like one of the most outgoing, supportive, and in my, per, in my opinion, perfect influencers. She's so authentic. She really goes out there to really promote people, promote businesses. She's true to herself. She posts stuff you could tell for herself. Like, it'll be like self-love stuff. Like, she's not doing it just for the clout. She's not doing it just for likes. And I love that about her. She's also so positive. And she's always thinking about other people, like celebrating other people. So also, she's been so sweet, like also been so supportive of me during my artist journey. And I see that and I recognize that so much. And she's just been doing a lot too for herself. Like she's got the 116th Hotline podcast with her other two amazing friends who are super talented as well. Super sweet girls. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, yeah. So shout out to Sultana. We love you. Love you, boo. Yeah. Thank you too. I feel like um, Sultana, she, I see her in a lot of our comments and likes yes. and let me tell you those things go far like when as you as you become an influencer and also as you establish your business yeah you always want to make sure you keep out a look out for the people who believe in you yeah. and i love sultana because i truly think that she believes in us yes and that makes a difference so sultana like you got on my radar like that i was like this girl shows so much love i love her Yes. And I love watching the 116th hotline because she's yes. so authentic. Yes. So authentic and so amazing and so headstrong. I love the way you guys talk. You guys talk like you guys are literally like eating dinner and just like. Yeah. Yeah. Da 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 da. Yes. Amazing. Girls. I feel like when Nikki and I talk, we're just like, oh my god. Da -da -da. Yeah. Da -da -da. <laughs> We are, not that we're different people off the camera, but we really are, and it's so hilarious. You guys just have to meet us in person, too, to really get to know us and just hear our conversations yeah. together, but... Yeah, I'm, like, not trying to say that this isn't who I am in person. I am this person. Yeah. But this is who I am on camera, and this is who I am, like, out of, off camera, like, 50% of the time. Yeah. The other 50% of the time is, like, look, I'm recharging. Recharging. <laughs> well, here's the thing is, we're either recharging or either loud as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's yeah. like no other... Like, when I'm quiet, that, either appreciate it or know that, like, well, yeah. damn, she's real tired. Yeah. It's, it's that time she's charging. Um, oh. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, so we we love Sultan. Oh, shit, we love Sultan. Dude, I, I finished my drink. Can we just notice I killed... I'm almost done with my... Dude, I killed this young... This coconut juice is smacking. Even with the pulp, I have grown to love it. I thought I was gonna not love it, and I literally mm -hmm. murdered this. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. thinking we'll grab another one, but we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, outside of that, though, we all like. I would say another influencer that I've been watching. Well, influencer, actor, artist. Oh, not artist. Influencer, actor. Ugh, I don't even know what to name her. But Sarah V. Content official. Creator. Yeah. Oh yeah, content creator. That's what I was. Getting. I love her. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm gonna admit something so funny that I've never said to her. I've only ever told my husband this, and nobody's ever known this until today. But whoever's on the podcast today is gonna know. I love Sarah V so much. She is so pretty and she's so cute, and I love her so much. Before I even met her, though, I was like, oh, I love her. 
because she looks like my bias. <gasps> Wait, who? <laughs> Who's your bias? I hope she doesn't hate me for saying this. But I love my bias from EXO, Dio. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I haven't. No, oh, I okay. Know. Well, Dio is my bias from EXO, and she and I feel like they kind of look the same. And when I saw her, I was like, <gasps> I was like, oh my gosh, she looks like Dio. She looks like Kim Soupa. So yeah. Also, like, also just like she also really looks like what's that girl's name? That Chinese actress. I can't think of it, but I'm gonna put the from image Mulan? right here. Yeah, that chick, Li yeah. Yaofeng or whatever her name is. Li Fu Yang Nong Hai Tong Shao Chong. Milan yeah, shoot. her was Milan so shoot was amazing, and the guy that who, like who edited a new photo through Photoshop on, on her, like, oh my god, phenomenal so work. So good, so good. I never Phenomenal's knew I needed this. Yes. I never knew I needed that in my life. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, you are amazing, and I mean, Sarah started off with TikTok. She got yes. kicked off of TikTok, right? So, yes, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think that's where it all started. So that's super lit. I yeah. love that. I'm not gonna lie. When during when COVID happened and TikTok was like booming, and you know people were like getting famous, and because that's all people were doing. I remember there was a few monk creators. I'm like, damn. I was like, damn. They got a lot of fun. I'm like, you go. I was like, mm -hmm. damn. Like, I didn't. I didn't believe we could make it this far, but we did. <laughs> I mean, I only ever made it to like 20k on TikTok. Oh, but, uh, but you did an amazing job. I remember going through your TikTok one day, and I was laughing my ass off. Bro, I was like, do I was literally spending hours <laughs> on hours making TikToks. That shit is not a, a game. I remember this one day I spent like a whole eight hours shooting TikToks, you guys, and I only shot maybe like four or five of them. But it That's was all like works. skit content. Yeah, like I had to like. Do a ton of sounds and like da da da, but yeah. So I get props to people who still TikTok and have that as a career now. I know that's probably hard, um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Do you have any influencers you can think of? Influencers um, that I. Well, I love Dictum Dose. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, I think he really got really big, like just the beginning of this year or maybe last year. Yeah. Last year too, but then really, really like just skyrocketed this of year. Of course. And obviously he is my relative, but. I'm just a big fan of his work, and I have been on an emotional, like, inner child healing journey um, yeah. this entire year. And so a lot of his stuff speaks to me, uh, not just on men's mental health, but mental yeah. health for your well-being. And so yeah. I just, like, was seeking a lot of, like, self-love, self-help podcasts, and wow. I love tuning into his Thursday night gatherings. Yes. So Dick Mendoza has been amazing, and he's a great influencer for yes. our community as well. I mean, he's at Sabadee Fest, he's... You know, he's going to yeah. be a keynote speaker to he's all the everywhere. Players. I mean, if you yeah. haven't seen him, what are you doing? I'm just kidding. Speaking of which, if you guys haven't yet, we actually have an episode with Calvin. We dropped it before yeah. this podcast. So if you guys so get a look. chance, check it down below. Yeah, it's really We good. love Calvin. Ah, thank you to Gundos for joining yeah, us. Amazing. Have a superstar on our podcast. Yeah. Um, another influencer that I really... Oh, I just lost my train of thought. I was trying to think... No, Nini! Nini! Oh, Nini! Yes! That's her. Yes. I love you. She's Nini. amazing. Dude, I freaking love Nini. She's so sweet. She's so like unapologetic. She's very like, I'm gonna do and she like she does whatever she wants and she kills it. Like every makeup look she does, every video that she makes, the transitions, I'm just like, girl. Yes. Boo. Oh boo boo. All those her all their sisters are so creative. Yes. Like they're all doing something for themselves and I love that. Whole that whole family is a breed of content creators and beauty influencers. Mm-hmm. You guys check out Nini, her Nini's jewelry. I have one yes. I should have worn it today. Yes. But I have one of her um rings. It's a London uh tip uh London oh, speaking blue of diamond jewelry. I wanna like, buy a freaking ring. I have yeah. to buy from her business. So you, you know what? Go check I'm her gonna out. do that for Christmas. Yeah. Woo. Nini is also, she's an influencer, but she's also a social media brand marketing, like, manager. Yep, and so, yep. I remember, like, talking to her maybe a month ago. I was just like, what do you think about my brand? How can I elevate my brand? And, oh, my God, literally spoke to her for, like, five minutes, and I, like, got my vision. She's really that great. Like, I can attach to it. Like, she's amazing, you guys. I think it's time I hit her up, then, for my brand. Yes. <laughs> She's amazing. Yes. I mean, you're really good at what you 
do already. True, but you know, me being me, it's I, good to be. It's always good to get your friends' opinions and yeah. be like, hey, like, what can I do better? Yeah, she's um, great. But I have to hit her up. I love her jewelry. She's always promoting. I'm always thinking, like, damn, I need to buy some. Um, outside of that, I'll say another influencer that I really, 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 really love and have not met yet is Life of KPH. I love her too! Kim! This is for you! We would love you to be on the Asian Party Podcast someday. Yeah. Um, if we were rich, we would fly you out from North Carolina here, but unfortunately, bitchy, one yap, blah, blah, Yeah. So, for now... I love watching your Facebook live, love the kids. We will age. support you, yeah, social media wise and like your content and push your stuff because we love you. Life uh for those of you guys who don't know Life of KPH, it's Kim, um, Paul, and Hanzo. That's what Life of KPH stands for. So it's basically a Facebook uh, page where we're all about them and they create a lot of really funny Hmong content. Yeah. Kim is so on she's truthfully in my opinion the funniest person and she is so true to herself like yeah i feel like what you see is exactly what you get truthfully like dead ass mm -hmm. um and she seems like a really really fun girl so kim i love you yes you're amazing we're another fan another person that i thought of too is um sally cha oh my god yeah sally. the girl who does readings and now does tattoos yeah and she's also a medium yes she's doing medium work as well and she's like has spirit guides she's like a shaman right yeah so i love watching her journey as a shaman and how she's also using that to connect with the Hmong community i think yes. that's such a that's so powerful yes um so sally i'm a big fan of your work oh yes both yeah. of us i was i commented before on her post i don't even know because she probably get like hella comments yeah no. but i was like i wish i could get tattooed and unfortunately i can but one day i hope so and i think i think i shared the post but i was like i'll just share it so hopefully someone yes. else gets this tattoo i share it and a like and a comment always goes a long way you yes. guys it's the best i can do because i'm not i'm not there <laughs> <laughs> um outside of that though i think another thing that like happened in the monk community that i saw you know as a monk recap like i swear to god i saw this everywhere i saw like everywhere on facebook this whole summer i just kept seeing Sun fat Thai tea, sun fat Thai tea, sun hey. fat, sun fat, sun fat Thai tea, sun fat Thai tea corporation, sun fat Thai tea, sun fat Thai tea corporation. And y'all, I can finally say that we are sponsored by Sun Fat Corporations. They are so amazing. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why everybody's drinking them. There's a reason why everybody is sharing and promoting them because they are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. These are great drinks, you guys. Like, I am not one for Asian drinks other than soy milk and then boba, obviously. Um, but this has really grown on me and I hate coconut. Yeah, me I too. Hate coconut passion. I will eat nothing coconut, okay? Mm. Uh, but this drink, I cannot stress you guys enough, is so good. Especially, this is one of my favorite one, the young coconut juice with pulp. It doesn't have a ton of ton of pulp in my opinion, so I can drink it a lot more. But even then, the pulp, like, once you get used to the drink, it's like, literally, it tastes like nothing. It tastes so good. The pulp tastes like jelly. Jelly. At that point in time, yeah. So that was another thing, and I'll just say I feel like it was a really big win. This is our first sponsorship too, and Sun Fat Corporations has been such an amazing, um, such an amazing help and support to Asian Party Podcast. Thank mm -hmm. you guys so much for supporting us this season and sponsoring us, um, even sponsoring our music videos and some of the projects that we had going on on the site as well. It's so amazing to know that you have a community that supports you that is that looks like you speaks like you and talks like you and understands you so thank you so much sun fat corporations we appreciate you guys for your sponsorship we love y'all drinks we love y'all food and you know if you guys haven't already make sure you guys check them out they're located in the sacramento and fresno area make sure you guys go check them out at those asian restaurants asian hello asian stores y'all favorite places where you go <clears throat> i'm spinning your favorite places where you go get your spring rolls and your egg rolls and your parents go shop for food when you guys don't want to cook those places mm -hmm. they will have them <laughs> That was a very great description on where to find them. You know that? I'm like, grandma become a home like, you want some color pop? What's some color pop? I'm like, where, yeah. the, where the, did you get that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so some fat corporations, make sure you guys check out their products. It's super good. They also have a faux broth mix out. It's instant. Super great. It's super yummy. Make sure you guys check that out. Uh, as long with some of their other food products they have they have dropping. Perfect in time for the holiday seasons to mm -hmm. cook for your family. So check Yay. that out. Thank you so much, Sun Fat. Uh, uh, and then I guess um oh, sorry, I oh. one more thing to mention is I'm so proud of Hmong people. We went to New York Fashion Week. Oh, hell yeah! Remember? And Fa Yingsa walked and oh my god, like seeing pictures 
of uh, Cha, Lore, Cha, and all those models. Oh my god! Like all yes. those Mo models. Kal uh, Kalia, Kalina, sorry, Kalina, 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 Kalina and K. Nikita. Yes. Like, you girls were watching you guys, and I'm so proud of all the de the designers. I'm so proud of y'all. Yes, and I, my favorite one, my favorite one was all the vintage clothing. I love the vintage and the texture. I think that's kind of my thing too, going into fashion, is the texture and the vintage look is so amazing. So uh, I think it's called Murr Designs. If I'm Ooh. saying it right, it has an H, but it's an M, and it's like silent for, oh, I think like it's for Mung, but Murr Designs. Um, but yeah, huge fan of your work and a uh, red green rivers too. Congratulations. Your I mean your pieces were phenomenal But I wanted to give a big shout out to that too as a long recap like we went to New York fashion yes. week this year And that's amazing. That's a huge milestone for us so, Ooh, yes. Speaking of that obviously but mm -hmm. that was a big win for yes. this past year, her being the first Hmong, yeah. right? Hmong, yep, Rep. to represent Laos. Yes, so that was a big one for the community. Wait, what What was the pageant title name? Uh, Miss Universe. Miss Miss Universe? Mm -hmm. Was it Miss Universe or Miss Hmong Universe? No, Miss... Well, she's Miss Universe Hmong, yeah. Oh, Miss Universe Hmong, okay. She, yeah. Wow, yeah, so that was freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and Lexus. Lexus! From A to K! stalking their Instagram so much but they've just been posting a lot of like dance covers and like trends and like fine I get it right now they're probably training really hard yeah you know so they're probably just dropping all this content that they're getting done in between but mm -hmm. um, yeah that was a really big win for us this year too so congratulations Lexus we are so proud of you um, yeah. thank you for Rockin'. living all of our dreams for us yes <laughs> Oh my gosh, and to everyone else that's doing really hard work and just being creative and ambitious and trying to get out there too, like we see you, we love yes. you, we hear you, and yes. you know, like you're gonna get up there soon. Like, we're super proud of you. Please, yeah, please, please comment below if you got a business you have started, tag them if you're an artist, you got some songs you yes. just dropped. Anything that you want to promote about yourself, please drop it below. I don't give no cares, y'all. This is shameless advertisement. Let's do it. I love it. I do it all the time. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And it's not shameless. We are supporting y'all. Let's do it. Let's do it. I love shouting people out. So yeah. drop those people down. If it's not you, if it's somebody you know who you think is deserving of it, please drop them down below. We'll make sure to shout them out for the next podcast. Yes. Yes. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. Um, outside of that, I think it's a good way to end with one of our more exciting interesting milestones um we officially have a Hmong person in the community who officially can say they are a what millionaire 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 oh my yes yes and me. thanks to miss yasmi y a s m i uh, uh, yes she me. said yes me. Me. Yes. wow I'm so proud of her Seriously. for everything bro I know it took her a minute to get here, and I know she did a lot to get to where she is today. So all props to her, to that woman, all the controversies that she's been through and the stuff that she had to deal with mm -hmm. to get to the point she is today. Hey, woman, at the end of the day, her bank account is bigger than ours. Mm -hmm. ah, it's okay, yeah. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> you guys, like, I mean, you know, it's not even a shame to even announce it that yes. you are a millionaire because you work really hard. Like, I remember when yeah. she posted it, and... You know, there was like such a, like, uh, what is it, controversy over it. Like, some people were hating on her, some people were giving Why? her hate comments. You know, Why? and then obviously there's positive comments, but I mean, not a lot of people post and share their work. Like, hey, I just hit a million. This is a milestone for me. You yeah. can do it too. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, I posted it, I made a million dollars, haha. It was a, hey, like, I'm just a regular person just like you. If you believe in yourself, yeah. you can do it. And so I love that. Like I just felt way more empowered. I felt powerful reading Yasmi's message. Not yeah. empowered. I felt powerful, and that's a huge thing. Like I'm gonna get there. You know what I mean? Like you know what I think would be so cool? Because like I said, I know the Hmong people are still expanding. We're still learning, right? For all we know, this person might not even exist yet. But mm -hmm. I would love if we had like a Hmong Vogue. 
or like a Hmong magazine that was consistent Ooh. that would drop that had news. Like I honestly, you know, okay, you know, I'm taking it right now. I'm taking that idea. We're taking it into the party. Mom's I was like, newsletter. Dude, do you oh, remember Mom's those book. good old days when like you used to get magazines and then like it would also come with like posters that you could like rip out and put. Like, yes. Yeah. Like we didn't. Really, we should be partnering. Okay, I'm not even. Yeah, I'm not gonna say and that. And do edition magazines. Yeah, yeah. Do special edition magazines. See, and you know how cool that'd be. So you could go there and find all the clout. Who's doing what? Who's dating what? Who's dropping what? Who's touring when and where? Like, mm -hmm. but I know that's gonna take a lot because this person who who's managing the magazine would have to like know all this stuff and make yeah. sure this thing, you know, editorial would be have to be on point. Too. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, whoever is capable of that, that'd be amazing to have one day. So I don't know if you're out there already or if you have yet to be born, but one day hopefully we have a like Hmong magazine, you know, that is like yes. really really good at its resources and all that stuff. But yeah, mm -hmm. congratulations to Yasmi. Thank you so much for showing us that we could do it, that Hmong people could do it, mm -hmm. that Hmong women can do it. Yes. Yes, I mean, I want to be just like you. Yes. Like, literally, I'm trying to be just like you. We're so. trying to, yeah. <laughs> I never, I'm not even going to lie. She's so smart. Like, I've never even thought, I'm going to be a billionaire, a millionaire. I'm like, I just want to have money. But she's like, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm like, I just want to have money. <laughs> she's out here like. I'm figuring, planning, planning, like, like I'm doing yeah. this, you know, so I love that, like, she's so clearly got the funny. mindset, so I'm gonna let her get to your level, and I'm gonna be like, okay, Nikki, I'm right, I'm your yes, sister, you're right. I'm your intern, show me how you did this, don't worry, mm. you guys, my dream is to become a billionaire, okay, I'm not gonna her. stop a millionaire, I'm gonna be a billionaire, and I know what I'm gonna it. do, my dream is to produce a Hmong movie, Whoa! my my dream is to create a, an organization that supports and benefits our Hmong artists yes. on another level like yeah i'm learning so much about hollywood los angeles and how this shit works like we I came am, here to learn about I that studying there is and no I'm way else to do, do that than here. Y'all. yes yes so look out i'm like there's a lot of things that i'm just like documenting in the works but i truly love my community and i'm not doing this for clout like i would do it even under another name yeah you know what i mean that's how much i care it's just i want to put us on there and yes. it's in the works you guys but yes. that is my dream is to produce a Hmong movie like I love that. Yeah, I love that so much I hope we have so many Hmong movies by like 2030. Yeah, I hope there's like 50 Hmong movies out there already. Mm -hmm. I that's not that's so little but that's just me putting like the most minimum standard on it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the minimum standard at that 50, point. 50 okay? okay by 2030, okay? Yes. Um, yes. 50 artists do one movie we're good yes um, but yeah so that's that's it's been a, it's been an amazing mm -hmm. year for the Hmong people I will say it's so crazy being able to wake up every day and seeing new news about somebody new somebody who's conquering something that we've never seen before maybe even somebody who's doing something that we've already seen but doing it on a level we've never seen before you know mm -hmm. so just stuff like that it's been an amazing year just know that if you don't feel like you got the support just know there are people out there cheering for you there's people like us who are watching you who love that and are finding that so amazing and phenomenal mm -hmm. you are a footprint of the community and we love that so mm -hmm. celebrating all you guys out there who maybe haven't been shouted out shout out to you keep hustling doing what you're doing only you know what you're doing <clears throat> at the end of the day so congrats and also happy happy new year's y'all happy end of the years yeah. merry christmas i hope you guys are having the most wonderful time with your family this year just know that we love y'all it's been a great uh second season of asian party mm -hmm. we've learned again a lot about podcasts troubleshooting mm -mm. things topics all the stuff what we want to do how we want to shape asian party so it's been a great two years with y'all thank you guys for rocking with us um yeah anything else you want to add oh my gosh you literally took it out of my mouth but like ditto you know what i mean i love you guys we truly love you guys i feel like this this year we put in a lot of work and effort to really think about the different topics yes. that we want to talk about yes. that you guys can also relate to. So any feedback, any, you know, let comments, know. love, like, just let us know. Y'all yeah. watching us. So yeah. let us know how more interesting we could be. If, yeah. If, 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 let us, if you're going to be watching us, make it worth your time. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We love y'all. Yeah. So let us, if we're taking any criti constructive criticism, man. Mm -hmm. Give it to us. Give it to us. Yes. Good. And like Nina said, love you guys. And I hope you guys have an amazing new year and like we're gonna elevate next yes. year. 
We can't wait too. to see you guys next year. Can't wait to show you guys what we have in store because each season, you know, we always want to change it up, bring something a little bit bigger, yes. something a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's been a great year. So thank you guys so much. As always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and on YouTube so you can stay up to date on all the episodes that we've dropped so far. As you guys know, moving forward, the rest of the spring season, we're not going to be as active on YouTube, but always make sure you guys follow us on Instagram because we'll be dropping content on there. We'll be dropping vlogs. We always drop videos. You know, we love staying present with y'all, so mm -hmm. stay tuned. We love you guys. Happy holidays, y'all. See you guys Bye. next year. <laughs> Also, does your sweater say thrive?